examples of that. I've made my statement, so really if I quit now, that was it. That's all I wanted to tell you, but I would like to give you some examples of that. One example is when I hear people, I'm going to show you something, how is the reverse of everything. This is just like, almost like turning a subject upside down and looking at it again. Somebody comes to us and attacks us. I, I mentioned that last night. And they say, oh, what a dumb thing. Look at, look at, ah, you're so backward. How? Oh. What's this thing about right hand, left hand thing? What is that all about? Come on, man. You know, because we shake hands with this. We don't want somebody to give us a left hand, do we? No. no. This is very bad. Somebody hand you the left hand. <sighs> he better be crippled in the other hand. <laughs> because that's wrong. Isn't it? What I, what I use this hand for? Besides shaking hands, what I use it for? Eating. eating. This is for eating. Do I eat with this hand? <laughs> how about, how do, how do we eat? Imagine sitting with somebody and he's going to put his left hand out there. Hey, 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 hey. What's that? Why? Oh, because you're backward. You don't even know your left hand from your right. Ha, ha, ha. Even I heard one recently say that they wanted to take this apart and said, how are you going to deal in a sociably acceptable environment? I like the way they put this, right? And eat in a decent restaurant with utensils. You know, it sounds like you're talking to a primitive caveman, right? <laughs> because when you cut your meat, don't you pick up the knife with this hand? Yeah. And you pick up the fork with this hand? Yeah. You cut the meat. Huh? Now, what's wrong with you? Can't you just put that in your mouth? What's the matter with you? We don't eat with the left hand. Oh, that's so backward. Even that. Now, check this out. There's a reason we do this because this hand, we keep it clean because this hand we use to clean ourselves after the toilet. Oh, oh, how backward. Don't you use paper? <laughs> the United States Navy did a study. They had it's a pretty cool way to do it, too, because in the Navy, you got people out on a boat. They can't get in touch with other people out there. And what they did, they had people washing their hands before and after their meals. On another ship, they ran the same test and had these guys not wash their hands before and after the meals to see what would happen. Totally and completely, no doubt about it, the ones washing hands before and after had the least amount of sicknesses being passed around. Of course, we know that real well nowadays because of what's happened with the studies that they've done and how many times people are getting this hepatitis, it's called hepatitis B, I think, that they're getting from the, these fast food places where they go in and they, the guy works there and he goes to the bathroom and come back, he doesn't wash his hands. Next thing you know, there's an outbreak of this all over the whole city. Everybody that ate there got it. So now they have these signs up there, you know, all employees must wash hands, things like that. Another time, a woman who worked for an insurance company, independent study, went out to a big corporation. They had so many employees taking off time, being sick, being ill, and so they asked her to come in and do a study. She went on every floor of the building and all their sub-buildings, everything around there, and, and did uh, tests, laboratory tests. And they would put this material, I saw the video on it, and she was putting this stuff, I don't know, it's like a dust or powder or something, on the telephones, on the keyboards, on this kind of thing, and then she would come back and collect it all up later, and they did studies, and they found fecal matter on the telephones and on the keyboards and on the fax machines and all the rest of it, along with other germs as well, because people weren't taking care to wash themselves after going to the toilet. So again, they are insisting employees wash hands, and it makes a huge difference. 
You wouldn't believe there was going to be such a difference over that. Now, how does this work into the left hand, right hand thing? How does that come in? Well, I got to stay on this subject a little bit more to get to it for you. If you want to talk about the toilet paper thing, okay, and I'm going to ask you, and I as it, now, you guys, most of you don't have a dog, but in the West, everybody's got a dog, you know, and ask them, if you went out to pick up the paper in the morning, the newspaper, you're going to pick it up, okay, the boy threw it in the grass, you go pick it up, you put your hand down and you go, oh, man, somebody walked the dog right by here, look at this, yeah? You got it on you. So what are you going to do? You're going to tear the newspaper and wipe that off, or you're going to go over to the hose and wash it off? Which one? So for the dog, you're washing, but for you, you're using paper. Ah. Now you're getting a clue. You're starting to get a clue. Because what happens when a person washes themselves, and this is what Muslims actually are doing, with the left hand, they, they're using water and totally washing themselves like if you were going to go to the bathtub or something. And the difference is tremendous because after this washing the hands and all, this hand is really a lot cleaner than you think. Now I'm going to take you back a thousand years. The big scientists, doctors, and scholars of the time were in Andalus, Andalusia in Spain. And these people were Muslims and they were using the principles taught by Muhammad 400 years before them and they were analyzing these things, talking about being very philosophical about these things. People like Ibn Sina and uh, Rushd and other people like this that uh, are still today mentioned in the medical books, history books. You'll find that they were coming up with some very amazing things for them at their time. So much so that by the time of the Black Plague in Europe, which we'll call the West of those days, the people there were dying like flies. So fast they couldn't bury them, they were throwing them on wagons, dead bodies on wagons. And it was so bad that people were everywhere, for this. something was killing them. They called it the Black Death or Black Plague. You can read about it, go get the encyclopedia, read about it. But these same people used to send their children to be educated in Spain because that's where the real higher, higher learning was. They sent them to Spain. But they found something amazing, even though some of the students came down with these diseases. It was only the students that came from Europe, but none of the locals got it. Why? And they came to know that it was because of this, this cleaning this hand and only eating with this hand and this hand only for anything dirty and still washing it anyway. The difference was that they were able to go back and solve the problem in Europe and that was the end of the Black Plague after they understood it. By the way, you won't find that in the common history books anymore today. There's no reason to mention that, is it? Especially because it has a connection to Islam. I'm going to share you with a, another one with you. Think about this. I was coming home one night from a program. It was very late at night, driving, back when my wife would let me drive. And I put my head down on the steering wheel at a red light, and I was so tired I couldn't lift my head back up. My little daughter was with me, and she's saying, Daddy, wake up. Daddy, wake up. I said, I can't. I'm exhausted. I'm going to pull over and stop. And she reached over and turned the radio on real loud. And I like to listen to talk shows, yeah? And the first thing come out, it was the beginning of the sentence. A man's voice said, always sit down when you eat or drink. I went, huh? He said, never stand up when you eat or drink. I'm going, Jamat Tablik is in town? <laughs> what is this? What's this guy talking about? You know, enjoy it to bleak. They always tell you that, don't they? Sit down when you eat or drink. This is Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You sit, you know, when you eat or drink. You know, stand up. And I'm thinking, what is this? He began explaining the damage that's caused starting at the neck 
and going all the way down and he described all the kinds of problems from the hiatal hernia to the pulling and tearing here in this part in the stomach and all of the operations that could be avoided if people would just sit while they eat or drink. I mean, I was wide awake. I drove all the way home listening to that. But now you got a problem. Because now if you realized what he said and understood all of the damage done to your body by standing up, so now you're going to sit down when you eat or drink. Are you doing it for Islam, for Allah, or are you doing it for your health? Make sense? 1,400 years ago, somebody giving you advice. You make fun of it until you find, oh, oh, it really works? Yeah, he was probably having a lucky guess. Huh? It surprises me that the Muslims don't pick up on this faster. I've seen people who were not Muslim see things happen and then come to Islam. Here's another example. I used to be in a wholesale bag business, plastic bags to a distributor, and I would go around different places and set up dealers. And I happened to be waiting for a person to get done with a customer in a store once. And he had a vitamin store, health food store, things like that, and I'm just walking around looking and what has he got going here? And he had some, something there in the toothpaste department, health toothpaste of some kind. And the claim on this toothpaste thing says that it's the only substance on earth that can remove plaque and tartar from your teeth without damaging the enamel. It improves the gums and even cleans the tongue and all the way down into your stomach. And it mentioned the ingredient, some technical name that I still can't pronounce, but it said it comes from Siwak. Huh? From what? Miswak. Yeah? And it showed a stick on there, and it was trimmed back. And I saw it. I said, that's a miswak stick. And I turned it over, Dr. Muhammad's toothpaste. $4.75 for this little, it's small, huh? And you still have to go buy a toothbrush. Or if you use the real miswack, instead of getting one or two percent, I think that's what it said was on there, you get a hundred percent and use the tooth stick that the Prophet used. And I've heard people today say, oh, you know, that's so tacky. You carry a stick with you? Oh. <laughs> oh. But when you see, and even today you see any of the brothers who use it regularly, what do their teeth look like? Huh? Light bulbs. When they go, and you go, whoa, whoa, wow. Uh, am I right or wrong? It's amazing, isn't it? But now, oh, let's go back to the guy cutting his steak. Huh? Go back and read Emily Post. Do you know who's Emily Post? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Go back and check the people who tell you about proper manners. The proper manners is, yes, you pick up the knife with the right hand, you pick up the fork with the left, you cut the steak, and then you lay the knife down, and you pick the fork up with the right, and you eat it with the right. So it always was the same anyway. Because this goes all the way back to Europe at a time when they were getting over that problem of the Black Plague. Hello? So... Often, we're taking criticism from ignorant people and then adding more ignorance on top of it and rejecting what's really intelligence. I'm saying not only the West needs Islam, I'm saying Muslims need Islam. Yes or no? Yeah. Uh, we deviated far away, far away from the real Islam. It's not just in the eating and the health and taking care of our bodies, but it's also in the way we treat each other. 
And that's much worse. It's a more important aspect of Islam is treatment of others. Because after your correct relationship with your Lord, the very next important thing is your correct relationship with the people. And if it sucks, then what are you all about? 